भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधीर नष्टु अभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैस्ती श्रीमद भागवत कैंथो टेन्थ चैप्टर सिक्सटी सिक्स टाइटल्ड Pondraka the Falls Vasudeva text number 16 Shule Ghadabi Pari gai Shakti दृष्टि प्रासा तो मरे हसी भी पट्टिशय आने प्राहरण आराया हरिम शूले गदा भी परि गए शक्तुरिष्टि प्रास तो मरे हसी भी पट्टी शय बार ने प्राहरण नारयो हरिम शूलेर गदाबी परि गए शक्तियुष्टी प्रासतो मरे हसी भी पट्टी शय बार ने प्राहरण नरो यो हरिम शूलेर गदाबी परि गए शक्तियारस्ति प्रासतो मरे हसी भी पट्टी शय बार ने प्राहरण नरो यो हरिम
माता जी शक्ति आयुष्टि प्रासतो मरे हसी भी पटी शे बार ने प्राहरण ना रयो हरिम शूले विद ट्राइडेंट्स गधाबी क्लब्स परिगए एंड ब्लजियांस शक्ति पाइक्स रिस्टी ए काइंड ऑफ सोड प्रासा लॉन्ग बाबर डार्ट्स Tomarai and lances, Asibi with swords, Patti Shai with axes, Bhane and with arrows, Praharan attacked, Araya the enemies, Harim Lord Krishna. Translation by the disciples of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The enemies of Lord Hari attacked him with tridents, clubs, bludgeons, pikes, rishtis, barbed darts, lances, swords, axes and arrows. There is no purport to this verse. So we we'll just read the translation of the next words and the purport. Purport by disciples of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The translation of the following verse is, But Lord Krishna fiercely struck back at the army of Pandraka and Kashi Raja, which consisted of elephants, chariots, cavalry and infantry. The Lord tormented his enemies with his club, sword, sudarshana, disc and arrows. Just as the fire of annihilation torments the various kinds of creatures at the end of a cosmic age. Purport, Srila Prabhupada comments as follows in Krishna book. The soldiers on the side of King Pondraka began to shower their weapons upon Krishna. The weapons including various kinds of tridents, clubs, poles, lances, swords, daggers and arrows came flying in waves and Krishna counteracted them. He smashed not only the weapons but also the soldiers and assistants of Pandraka. Just as during the dissolution of this universe, the fire of devastation burns everything to ashes. The elephants, the chariots, horses and infantry belonging to the opposite party were scattered by the weapons of Krishna. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shreemate Bhakti Vedanta Swamine Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Mirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashyatya Deshatarine 
Vancha Kalpatarubhyacha Kripasindhu Yaevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gauratu Se Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Prabhu so we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam and in this chapter we have been hearing about uh, for last several weeks how Pondraka because he had received some blessings from Lord Shiva so he had some special abilities some very unique power qualities but unfortunately he thought that it was his it belonged to him so when he thought it belonged to him he got intoxicated by that power so when he got intoxicated he lost his balance he became blind to see what is right and wrong in that state he behaved now again there is a behavior different levels some people may just boast about it that I am so and so huh? that is Sanskrit they say matha means he has gone lost his balance but there is someone above that pramatha <laughs> he is intoxicated he doesn't know what he's talking about completely in illusion but there is still someone about that hmm? unmatha that means he has gone mad huh? like English we say good better best but here it is matha pramatha unmatha so when uh, by some arrangement it was Shiva's blessings but Shiva is receiving of course power from Krishna so when he became blind he was challenging Krishna himself so anyway this is the situation here so the Lord is laughing now, what's wrong with this guy we know he is also a soul he is his child he is his son but he's behaving like this with him he's using these words for him but the Lord is very kind now he wants everyone of us to realize what is truth even if someone is challenging him but still he doesn't give up his love but then his different way of dealing with him so today we see that he is dealing with him in this he has to smash him so how to smash him one easy way to smash him is just kill him is it difficult for Krishna to kill him just like this out finish Krishna is controlling everything but then here there are so many details huh? before you saw today's words how huh? different types of arms how many you can name axe and arrows and lancets and swords and 
So why is the Lord doing like this Leela? Why is he making it so much exciting? Because conditioned souls, we like excitement. If we had just killed him like this, where is the excitement? We will not be talking about how was the challenge between Krishna and Pandrak. But here there is detail. Uh, now there are so many things, uh, so many words have been given. Uh, Sukadeva Goswami is speaking and that too this is 10th Kanthu. And he is speaking in details about the axes and swords and we, what is Amala Puran Bhagavatam. Uh, where is love here, you know, in these verses. This is actually the Lord's mercy for all conditioned souls. It is a very natural thing that we like some excitement. People are bored, they want excitement, then you go for entertainment. You go to movies, or you read novels, or you dramas, or music, or something challenging, something go up, you know, go for some adventure. <coughs> So, these leelas are molded in such a way that, you know, those people would like excitement, their minds are also attracted. This is his kindness, because he wants us to get attracted. He's just waiting, he's calling. So, this is uh, what is today's verse talking about in details about uh, violence, your attack, and really making us very excited. What is going to happen next? So this is the purpose, the Lord's kindness, He comes again and again and again and such unbelievable pastimes uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, special effects from Hollywood, uh, what to speak about, Bollywood and Tollywood and who can create this special effects of this type of world pastimes going on. But when we hear uh, from pure hearted soul, uh, now here in the end it is uh, all these leelas, Sukadeva Goswami will say that those who hear these leelas with a submissive heart, the Lord will always be there in their life. He will reside in their heart. We have been hearing these leelas for so long. It is said that even if you have committed sin, even if you have killed a brahmana, just by hearing these pastimes, all the sin will be washed away. Very encouraging. But it is not true that just hearing, no doubt, it has its own benefit. But how do you approach these realas? With what intention? You can worship God, there are demons. Pandraka also worshipped Shiva. But there's intention or something else. So one of the biggest obstacle for conditioned souls to get attracted is, is a false ego. The ego is like a big, big, big mountain. I'm sure all of us uh, in our own life, uh, we all know day to day that how much is our ego making loud shouting many times about different situations and relationships. Ego is the cause where it makes a lot of difference. So ego is one of the most biggest obstacle and it's a lifelong process to how to curb the ego. But here Lord, here Pondraka, there was no other way but he had to come challenge and destroy him. So this is in short about all this violence. But the, so the Lord has such several pastimes. So we thought uh, instead of talking philosophy, there is too much of philosophies. There is one more such uh, type of event to just to make us understand that a person when he is uh, uh, blessed with some materialistic qualification, you know, maybe power or wealth and how he becomes very arrogant and very stubborn and proud. 
So in Srimad Bhagavatam there is one such Leela, very interesting, which also says about uh, the modern day world, what is happening around, how, who is responsible for all things happening around, especially the environmental issues, keep on talking, everyone talks, talks, you should purify. But where is the problem? Is the problem outside or problem inside? No one talks about inside problem. So the story goes like this, there were uh, Kashyapa and Diti and then once it so happened that Diti was very much overwhelmed by desire and she wanted her husband's union Kashyapa Muni said, no, this is not the right time, this is not the right place. So Diti then showed all her charms and Kashyapa Muni could not and they united and then Kashyapa Muni said, listen, that was not the right time and place and our mood was not very devotional. So there will be two such souls taking birth in your womb and they will be very evil minded. So this way Hiranya Kashipu and Hiranyaksha were born. So now Hiranyaksha, he was also worshipping Shiva. So it is not that just worshipping itself makes a person very great. So what was he worshipping for? He was worshipping for power, prestige and exploitation. But he was worshipping. So by their blessings, Shiva, he became so powerful, his body became like a mountain. Just imagine the body is becoming like a mountain and with this power he conquered the whole universe. And when he conquered the whole universe, he thought everything is for his enjoyment, for his pleasure, he started exploiting. And one of the major exploitation those days, of course, gold was the most valuable thing. So he started plundering earth, mining, 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 mining so much gold that the earth lost its balance and it got, went down into the Garbo Dakshavish. He was still not satisfied. He had urge to fight. So he was looking out for some challenges. So because of his arrogance, he said no one could, who could defeat me? He never even thought anyone could defeat him. Because of his arrogance, he was looking around, then he dived deep into the ocean and went and challenged Varuna. And Varuna was an old man. But he said, I want to fight. He said, I'm an old man, you know. How can I fight? So he said, I will show you someone whom you should fight. And uh, he will be a proper challenge. And he will kill you and your body will be eaten by jackals and dogs. This is what. So till this time, something else had happened in the heavenly planets. Of course, demigods are all scared because Hiranyaksha is controlling everything. And Mother Earth is deep down in the Garbhodaksha ocean, so they went helplessly. So this is the state of demigods. So it is said that uh, the purpose why there are demons is, uh, one sense, to make the demigods submissive. Because that is what is uh, real life, to become submissive. So they run, they, they, they run to Brahma, and they plead, uh, what's happening? And now Brahma, the most powerful person, now see the most powerful, Brahma is everything. He also is becoming very submissive because he knows that he can't do anything. It is beyond his control. So when a person realizes it's beyond his control, only he'll become submissive. So he then meditates on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, my Lord. So that is the time something very strange, unique thing happens. From Brahma's nostril, 
something comes moving out, just the size of a thumb, small. And it comes out in front of him and then it goes into the sky and it starts expanding, expanding. And Brahma and demigods are all bewildered that who is this, what is it? But Brahma knew this is the Supreme Personality of God. It has come in this form. It is a form of a boar. And this form just went on expanding, expanding. It covered the whole sky. And then it turned around and looked, gave a very merciful glance to encourage them. Don't worry, I have come. So they were assured that something is going to happen now. Now from here the excitement begins. This is how the Leela is. So that we can hear excitement. So the mind gets at least something to get the mind to think about. And then obviously we had come with a purpose. He had a task. So the first thing he did was went down into the ocean picked up the earth from his tusk and when he came out that is the time in this advice was given by Varuna to Hiranyaksha go there is uh, Varahadev he is the right person go and fight with him Hiranyaksha taught who can defeat me here I am the controller so Hiranyaksha comes and he sees Vara. So, oh, fine, this is a real challenge. So he at attacks him, makes an attempt to attack him, but Varadev is not interested. He just ignores him and he just, because he is carrying Mother Earth. And Hiranyaksha is blaspheming him that you coward. You are of no use, running away. Now these words are actually very painful because he sees Hiranyaksha also as his child. Uh, he is his own son. He has forgotten because of this he is speaking like this. is very hurting. Same time the Lord when he is glorified is very pleased. That here he is hurt. But anyway he didn't care because he had a service to do. So he went and placed the earth in the proper place and then it turned around then Hiranaksha turned around and then they looked at each other face to face and then this begins so all the all the arms what is mentioned here were also used there so with the maze first it started with the maze and Vara also with the maze there's a fight going out they are smashing just imagine such huge bodies what type of a sound it must be creating in the sky in the space fight is going on in the space you need any more special effects uh, Varahadev and Hiranyaksha such huge body and fighting and bloods are smeared on their body it's going on and then the may slips from the Lord's hand and Hiranyaksha says no problem it's very sarcastic take it back we'll have a fair fight so he gives back to Vara so Vara takes the maze and then they fight and this time from Hiranyaksha's hand the may slips so the Lord says take back the maze he says, no. It's an insult to him. He said, why should I take? So he challenges him with fist. And the fight is going on. Fight is going on. You know, they use all possible things. And now the demigods are all watching. And this is in the afternoon. And then, suddenly, Hiranaksha disappears and when he disappears there is dark clouds and then there is whirlwind and there is a shower of mountain like stones with sharp edges falling and then there are tridents coming, axes coming, swords coming all different types of suddenly in the form of waves they come 
and then there are some yakshas, then some damsels making some ferocious sound. And then there are stool, urine, pus, blood being strewn everywhere. Excitement. And then all these things, the Lord just with his Sudarshan's light dissipates, everything disappears. So again Iranaksha appears. And again there is a fight. And then the Lord decides. The game is over. Enough. With is just hoof. He just touches the behind part of the ear of Hiranyaksha and Hiranyaksha falls down just like a tree collapses in the storm. He falls dead with his eyes bulging out, hair standing on, stools and urine falling out. So this is all the Lord created. He could have killed him easily, right? Why all these things? So that rest of eternity these Leelas will be spoken and people who have this inclination for excitement, entertainment, this is what is, isn't it? Huh? Nowadays special effect is, huh? in the movies they run because of special effect. It's not because of some performance. It is not good performance, acting. Special effects. Uh, so this is the state the Lord is kind. So the question arises, same again, that uh, well then, uh, uh, we have heard this before, we are hearing again and again, um, but then uh, Sukhudev Goswami says, those who hear this Leela, you know, their hearts will be transformed. So the truth is that uh, it is not just hearing, but how do we hear? So there are extreme things happening in Srimad Bhagavatam. One is demons, uh, demoniac characters, how with excitement the Lord kills. But then there are another and there are loving exchanges and you know, there are personalities who by their own life they show. Uh, if your heart is very pure, one is demoniac heart, another is pure heart. How does a pure heart behave? So there is another, another example. There are several such things uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam. But today, of course, is a very special day. Today is uh, Loknath Goswami's disappearance right now. Now, who is Loknath Goswami? In our parampara, there are many Goswamis. Now, who are Goswamis? Goswamis are pure hearted souls. So, it's very inspiring to hear from their lifestyle. Now that is another type of excitement for people who are very serious about transformation. Then they get inspiration from there. Okay, how did he live his life? So the Lord appeared this time. The previous one he appeared as Varadhev and here he appears as a very ordinary person. Huh? He behaves like an ordinary person. Then uh, comes in the form of a devotee, takes sannyas. That's Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Loknath Goswami said that uh, many, many years during this time, I don't know whether he came, was born before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I'm not very sure about it, but he appeared in some uh, village in Umrao, some Jasod district in Bengal. His parents' name was Padmanabh and Sita Chakravarti. But right from his early days of life, he was not interested in any type of materialistic activities. He's completely detached and always very devoted. As a young child, right from those days, he showed all those signs. But then he came to Navadip. And Navadip, he was a very intimate friend of Nimai Pandit. But then one day Nimai Pandit told him, very soon I am going to take sannyas in another three days. I want you to go to Vrindavan and you wait for me there for my arrival because after sannyas I will come to Vrindavan and I will meet you there. Now you see how pure-hearted souls exchange their 
how is their relationship? So now Loknath uh, Goswami, when he heard about it, he could not bear it because he never was separated for him for a single day. He was always there with him. And here he's been told to go. But then he thought, well, it's more important for me to follow the instructions than to be with him. So he didn't immediately leave. Now again, this is one quality of his. He went to Naudip, he went to all the Vaishnavas, he touched their feet, took the dust, worshipped them, and he seek blessings from them. I am going to Rindavan. So after taking everyone's blessings, and then he went. After that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we all know the story that he went to Katwa, then he took sannyas, and Lord Nityananda misled him, took to Shantipur, and from Shantipur, his mother instructed him that at least if you are in Puri, there is no difference between Puri and Vrindavan, be here. So I will come to know about you and I will feel I can also come and see you. So as per his mother's instruction, Sachi Devi, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made Jagannath Puri as his residence. So you are supposed to go to Vrindavan. And Loknath Goswami is waiting for him. Because he had said that. But then from Puri, very shortly after he transforms Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he goes to South India. So now Loknath Goswami there in Vrindavan comes to know about this. The Lord is supposed to come here and I am waiting here and he has gone to South India. So he was mad after this. How can I be staying here? He walks all the way to South India looking out for him bare feet and walking thousand miles so when he reaches South India it's too late but it takes time to reach there so Lord had already performed his pastime in South India and then he's gone back to Puri so Loknath Goswami thinks what is the use of I being in South India travels all the way to Jagannath Puri. So when he reaches Jagannath Puri, he comes to know that the Lord has gone to Rinda. Just imagine what he must be feeling. I am supposed to be waiting for him, receive him, make all arrangements for him. And now he has gone to Rindavan and I am in Puri. What a separation. See the separation of love. This is what is culture of love. He said, what happens? I, I think people now this WhatsApp and all there are something good and there are many things good also. Through this WhatsApp group, many uh, school friends, college friends, you know that they are getting united. They find out and they form a group. And now after maybe 25, 30 years, you know, because you know in my case it's 30 years, <laughs> college and they you catch up. Oh, what a reunion it is, oh, what a separation, fond memories and how, oh, you know, people, what are you doing, where are you now, can you post your picture, and how do you look like, <laughs> unfortunately I have become old now. <laughs> but then, see one thing common, very common, of course initial all this goes on, but after that you can see that everyone is bored. And the exchange is only jokes. Uh, one is jokes and obviously everyone has some married life experience. So then about each other's, you know, how is this, you know, relationship and this and... So there is definitely some type of a separation makes the heart go fonder. So many years you are not met and then you meet and oh, so much, you know, where are you? So technology brings people who are very far, very close, as Bhakti Rasam Rishwai Maharaj, same time, people who are very close, uh, husband, wife, children, they're very close at one home, but everyone is on it. Far. Uh, someone is far, close, and someone is close, far. Uh, so Loknath Goswami, of course this is at a very transcendental level, but see the separation, the nature of love, huh? real love, pure-hearted souls, how they reciprocate. 
So he's thinking, what I'm doing here in Jagannath Puri, he walks all the way to Vrindavan. And when he reaches Vrindavan, he comes to know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu already was there for several months. He went to all the twelve forests. He did all, he was there near Imlital, he stayed there and he went back to Prayag. How you feel, Loknath Goswami, how you must be feeling? My God, I was supposed to be here waiting for him, to receive him, serve him and he has come and gone. Fine, I'll go to Prayag. So he starts his journey to Prayag. And that is the time the Lord speaks to him. The Lord speaks to Loknath Goswami, he says that you don't have to go anywhere. You just be in Vrindavan and very soon Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami will come and meet you and you make your own nice Sangha. You be there. So Loknath Goswami abhors his plan for further chase. He stays back in Vrindavan, he goes to all the forests, he's there in Khadiravan, and there near Kishori Kund, he is alone with Bhugarbha Swami. They are just living a very isolated, a very uh, simple, completely absorbed, meditating, doing their bhajan. And then this desire comes in Loknath Goswami's heart. I like to worship the Lord in the form of deities. So when this desire comes, very soon, when he's sitting there near Kishori Kund, suddenly one Brahman appears with a bag of cloth. He just hands over to him, just walks away, and when he looks back, he sees he's not there, he's disappeared. So Loknath Goswami thinks, what is this bag? He opens it, and he opens beautiful deities and what is strange about these deities they start speaking to him <laughs> they start speaking to Loknath Goswami Loknath I know you have a desire to serve us so we have appeared that Brahmana was myself I just wanted to hand over these deities so I came in the form of Brahman now our name is Radha Vinod. They themselves say that. That our name is Radha Vinod. And now you feed us. Loknath Goswami living under a tree as nothing. And here the deities are asking that you feed me. So he somehow other he collects some herbs and roots. And he prepares some altar like thing for them. And he feeds them. He fans them. And he carries them wherever he's traveling because there is no place for them to live. So he carries them on his neck with a bag. And so when he's moving around in the village, the villagers say, Swamiji, go Swamiji, we want to make a cottage, a temple for you. We will make for you. He says, no, 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 I am fully satisfied. My Lord is there, I'm serving. This is his relationship with the Lord. So this is always going. And then of course the later part, See how it is. Now, one side we see people who are very much uh, with all uh, opulence and all, uh, they become so stubborn and arrogant, which is what Maharani Kunti says. Huh? And good birth and you know, Janma Ishwarya Shruti Diman. But here there is another paradox. There is one person comes to meet him. And he sees Loknath Goswami. He sees his pure heart. He decides. He is my spiritual master. And that is Narottam Das Thakur. So when Narottam Das Thakur approaches Loknath Goswami, Loknath Goswami says, no way. Because he has not accepted any disciple. And he had no plan to accept any disciple. But you see the difference now. Uh, of course, we heard about Pondraka and uh, Iranyaksha and several demonic. And now you see how is Narottam Das Thakur approaching. So he asked that I would like to be initiated. He said um, he wanted to postpone it, Loknath Goswami. He said, one year 
keep chanting i'll see now this one year so intensely he was eager for the way you are serving him you know, he was prepared to do such menial service and don't forget narottam das thakur was not an ordinary person he was a son of a king uh, he had all the material things everything he had one sense very rich he was but here he is doing menial service and the menial service the details you know all that how in advance he will go early in the morning night previous night he'll go to the place where loknath goswami every day goes and passes stool he'll go and clean those place with his own hands uh, and uh, sprinkle fragrant water and keep some water there and put some dried leaves around and all so loknath goswami is wondering i mean why, why every day i come here i mean who must be doing it you know why would anyone do this type of work you know make that place so clean so one day he hid himself behind the bushes and he saw it was narottam das the one who is uh, seeking is uh, you know please accept me as my disciple your disciple so when he saw it was narottam doing it he came running and he said why narottam you are a prince with your own hands why do you have to do it you don't need to do this and how does narottam das taku respond he says oh, my lord i have given up all the luxuries all the wealth all the illusion of this world and i have found the greatest treasure at your feet see what is the approach huh? uh, this is how he approached him so when he said that that the greatest treasure is at your feet and i just want to serve you please accept me that is the time loknath goswami's heart melts so what does he do he takes him in front of radha vinod and he tells my lord this is loknath goswami x so this is the role of a guru no is not that uh, many times this question comes why you need a guru in between you know i have a relationship directly with krishna where is the lord guru coming in the way he is just removing all the things in between and one of them is our ego the greatest obstacle is our ego that i it's i mine i am the enjoyer i am the doer this is mine the recognition is for me of course why i am not recognized the, the, the ego will be demanding shouting at all levels of our spiritual life so loknath goswami comes this is what is this this is connection he does it for same time it is not that uh, loknath goswami himself was a very submissive to his guru so that is our past history and in modern history we cannot forget about shila prabhupad so this is a uh, reciprocation guru shishya relationship prabhupad he was so successful everything was established is gone successful all over the world temples books been distributed everything is happening there are buses there are gurukuls there are farm communities restaurants bhakti vedanta institute prabhupad is on the top but what was prabhupad doing still translating in the middle of the night he never gave up that and that success and when he was asked he said well it's all because my spiritual master sent all of you you are all his representatives so i could do it uh, one disciple asked uh, prabhupad in those early days uh, we feel so sorry you were alone i hope i should have been there with you i could have he said i was never alone so what does that mean i was never alone prabhupad never ever forgot his spiritual master he said i was never alone he said bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur's instruction he never forgot throughout till the end till he left his body he was that service of translation writing books so this is a, a paradox where demonic influence and uh, pure heartedness and uh, lord does this leela for conditioned souls and we have our own huh? 
So this is Prabhupada in our iskon, what he has left behind for all of us is this culture. Of course, these are all very theoretical for me. There are very exalted souls here in this assembly who are by their own life. They are showing how to approach. And I'm sure if you have any comments on this or anyone has anything to add. So we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Bhagavad Puran ki his what should I say? Loknath Goswami Disappearance Day ki Srila Prabhupada ki Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Okay.